Hello my fellow apocalypse survivors, this is welcome to my channel and this is the Winter Game Fox channel. This is going to be episode 2 of season 1 of the GP5 review gas mask. And pretty much, which everyone to know, I already told you everything, how the GP5, what it is and everything. But this is going to be a tutorial on how to make yourself a civil, de civil defense DIY uh, NPC outfit to protect yourself from the nuclear radiation and everything. Not radiation, but technically, but in chemicals. If in radiation terms came, then you will have to use crap tons of tinfoil to protect yourself from everything. This is all going to be towards how to protect yourself from chemicals outside. Um, pretty much, that's the terms of it. So, here we got the GP5. We standardize. Fan, it's a classic Soviet um, gas mask. I'm not going to say full details about this gas mask. If you guys want the full information about this gas mask, check my episode 1. I'll give you a link description to my episode 1 of season 1 gas mask video review. So, you guys may know it's a GP5 gas mask. But it comes when you, buy the, when you buy the gas mask, it doesn't come with too much stuff on Amazon. It gives you a dangerous filter, which replacement is the TF1 Chinese filter. Like I said too many times, it's safe. So... I'm gonna give you a few steps in my way how to be fully protective from the chemicals outside and this um, well pollutionary thing. So if you know, like for example, we'll give a history example, like the Chernobyl Park. You know how the Chernobyl exploded. Not only Russia was affected with the radiation, but there's some uh, parts of countries that were also affected with not the radiation, well parts of radiation where it gets in the clouds and whatever it rains, it releases that type of chemical. Right? That's probably what the same case scenario would be to protect yourself. And for I'm going to pretend this filter is NBC, even though it's not NBC. Because if it was NBC, it would have been quite a dangerous filter for me to wear. Because it may contain asbestos or chlorophyll, but I don't want to get to the full details about that. So, I got two items here. Basically simple. Here's how to survive the um, um, chemical attack. Is not only you have to have a gas mask and a fully working filter, but you have to have two things if you're a civilian that can't get a hand on a uh, NBC suit. This is going to be DIY. So the two things you're going to want is a raincoat, which not like raincoat you see from it, but this raincoat like the one. So this is a standardized raincoat made by the company. Um, <coughs> Frog Togs, which apparently... Uh, the camera is really not good quality because it reads things backwards. So it's it's so it's made by Frog Talk. So if you can guys get a hold of that, then you guys can have. But these this is a pretty much a cheap use raincoat, but I would terminally use this for NBC. And then if anything, if you have a, if if you guys have it, if you guys don't have it, then. That's, you will survive, but then you have to make sure your whole entire arms are protected. But I have a standardized camouflage uh, military jacket. Uh, I don't know who put that there. Uh, I don't know. Wait, remember, remember, I bought this off um, surplus. But this is a standardized U.S. Air Force um, jacket. It's not combat, but it is a um, good use. It kind of reminds me of the 1980s, the, how the military used to look like in the 80s, where they were camouflaged like this. There's even pictures of images of what they looked like back in the 80s, but still. So those are your two items you want today to use. Now, in other case in terms, you're gonna probably going to use something else besides that, but from this point, these are two things that I can close get to, get to making it. I will make a video high at the, reviewing the actual NBC suit, but that will happen pretty soon. So I'm going to show you how you guys put it on. So I'm going to take this bag off off me. I know I like the way out it carries, but... Yeah. So first things first. My chair was squeaking up and on. So you put it on your raincoat. Nothing, nothing fancy or simple. Take the hood off. So you're really going to be here. Tighten your neck, so you're gonna tighten your neck up, <coughs> so that way when you put on your gas mask on, you can be fully prepared to put it on. I actually I would do this after I put the gas mask on, so that way you can size the uh, 
heading now. Now, once you have done after that, you're gonna have to, you're gonna want to get a um, a military jacket, and then put it on you. I know you're gonna have to tuck in the uh, raincoat to fit in really good, so that way your sleeves are quite protective when it comes to combat issues. I mean, not in combat, but but you know, if you were to have to survive the uh, break and you're had to against other civilians, then yeah. So once you have done that, if you you know your jacket's not gonna button up, then it's not gonna button up. So you have it, put it on fully. Now all that's left to do is to wear the gas mask, which I will test this out too to make sure if there's any leaking or anything. I'm gonna be using obviously for breeze because it's a, it's compared to air freshener and everything, they're all gonna spray up in the air but the, the Febreze is a heavy watery uh, chemical it's a heavy chemical thing that to, like once you get it on your body then you can easily tell if your skin smells like Febreze to able to tell if that your body is um, contained but the only way to secure yourself from fully from the chemicals if you want to be secured is have a good sizing military jacket which I'm not going to fully put in this button this up but I will try to actually if I can uh, these buttons for the 1980 uh, Air Force jackets are quite difficult to put on I mean these are I uh, may not be in the 1980s but it is a pretty outdated um, jacket and apparently when I bought this in the surplus store the the man forgot to, to, take, off, to take off the kernel symbol off the jacket so it's a kernel uh, wear but not really much big terms so, as you guys may know, this is probably the best bet to protect yourself. If you guys don't have a military jacket, alternatively, you could use a, um, if you have an extra large or large jacket, then you want to put that on so that you can, your, glass, your jacket may get soaking wet from the chemicals, but that won't be the term case. So, I have the whole thing tucked in, so I have the hood. So, once you have it on, then... The final part is putting on the gas mask. Like I have said too many times, if you're putting a GP5 or any gas mask from the Soviets that protect your headwear, you want to keep your... How I do it is keep my hair wet, which I have a water bottle for a reason. So that way I can wet my hair a little bit. So it's not too wet, but it's a little soaky wet, it's like semi-wet. And then that way my head can fit like a glove. For some people, they have to make your hair bold to be able to fit on the gas mask 100% so they can always... But anyways, once you put the gas mask on, and then you're going to want to put the filter on and wrap the hood around your the, fil the gas mask. And then you have a full-blown NBC suit, which I might um, record. I'm not going to record in my restroom because my restroom is being used by some guests. So... I'm gonna be using my closet because it's a full surrounded room that no actually can, can get out or they could get out but there were so I'm gonna put the gas mask on okay guys so I have a gas mask on it's still quite comfortable considering the hair yeah okay Okay, so once you've done that, put the filter on so you can make sure that you're fully secure. And now... <laughs> and then there you guys have it. You got NBC suit. Okay. Okay. So that's how he goes. Now you have a few options to protect your hair. I mean, protect yourself. Is uh, if you want your mask fully protective and you just want the nozzle just left out and everything, and your eyesight's, then that's all fine. Just cover your head. Unless you don't want to go through that process, you just want to be fully protected. Then there you go. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when wearing a combat helmet. So I'm gonna pause it right here and then shit. All right, guys. So I have here is my combat helmet. I'll show you just in a bit. I got to attach some stuff on it. So 
I like to make it look like it was a real actual military helmet, even though it's not real. But here I got is the um, my airsoft combat helmet. If I would have the real one, then it would have been nice. It would fit like a glove. But this is airsoft, obviously airsoft. So if you want to be a display person using this for Comic Con or any like that stuff, then you don't want to go too real. Just stick with a simple airsoft helmet. But for protection use is probably best too. So I'm gonna put on the mask. And then I'm going to show you probably three thing, three ways that people have to protect yourself. So you put the mask on, and then let me guys know in the comment below. Like I said again, because I haven't got any uh, messages saying how if they can clearly hear me through this gas mask. But like I said, put it put in the comment below if you can hear me what I'm saying behind this gas mask. So this is what it looks like putting on the gas mask. And as you can, as you guys know, this is a safe filter, like I've said too many times. So if you guys are wondering, this is a safer filter. Now this is what it looks like when you just want to go like this. To so able to do this, you're going to want to get the... <laughs> Alright guys, so this is what it looked like wearing the NBC suit. Now, I'm gonna put this helmet on to see what it looks like when I'm putting this. So, so it looks like when I have a GP5 filter or a GP5 gas mask on. Nothing much complicated, but pretty much it is a good gas mask to have on. Now, okay, I'm gonna take this thing off so I can uh, check this thing over the good both sides and everything. Okay. All right. So um, to give you guys uh, what I just said, uh, the gas mask is really comfortable. Like I said too many times, it's quite a very useful gas mask to put on, and pretty much it is. Um, um, if I would recommend them, if you were in a chemical attack, you would actually might probably purchase one of these because these are cheap. Because gas masks I've seen now, the, the Israeli gas masks are worth $30. So it's a $30 gas mask you have to purchase for, for gas mask. But pretty much. Now the combat helmet was kind of unnecessary. But if you really want to protect it, then this is what it really looks like. Um, it's nothing special about this guy, uh, this helmet, but it's just airsoft. I kind of like it because it's a replica of the United States. I believe the United States combat helmet. I mean, many countries have these, but it's a tactical helmet. And I forgot to put an American patch on it, but anyways. I'm going to describe. What I'm wearing now feels a lot comfortable. But the, there is a warning sign that it feels really hot just by wearing this. Because then the raincoat is not very hot. Like, it's not fully protective. I mean, it is fully protective. But like, when it's, like, hot outside and you know there's going to be chemical attack during the heat. This is probably will give you a little heat. You'll feel a lot of sweatiness. And then this jacket feels a lot comfortable. I honestly didn't think this, ga this jacket would fit on me. Because I haven't put this on since 2016. And it still fits on me perfectly like a glove. It's um, Air Force, if you guys are wondering to know. But, anyways, this is what the... Now, I'm going to test the gas mask out now because I realized that the restroom is available to use. So, I'm going to be testing it out and show you guys how it works and everything. I'm going to be testing out not only if I can get the scent, but I'm going to also test it if my body has received any, any uh, air freshener scent. 
So I'm not gonna be using the spray that sprays on top of the air. I'm gonna use for breeze where I gonna have someone spraying for breeze all over me a bunch of times, like get me soaky wet. Not soaky wet, but just fully. Like I'm already can smell it from the outside, but what what I get the inside, wet and everything. Another thing I forgot to forgot to put describe in the video is that not only that you're supposed to have thick layer gloves to protect yourself from the uh, chemicals. So this is like for for instance, this is probably for any gloves. If you have medical gloves or if it's serving gloves, serving gloves won't do you better. So it's best to have medical gloves because. They're meant to build to, to for survive any contaminated um, chemicals and everything. But pretty much it is a, a good source of protective to put protect your hand. But they say it says it protects them about ninety five percent of whatever you're gonna be taking in. So once you have it fully on, this is what you're gonna look like when you're having the so, yeah, this is just for extra thing to protect yourself fully. I know it's gonna look weird when you have blue hands, but I'm pretty sure I could look up and I could find some NBC gloves or or some type of rubber gloves that protect you. I do have the aluminum foil gloves, but I don't have, I can't find them at the moment. So, at this point, I'm using medical gloves. So, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna test this uh, whole process in the restroom to show you guys how it works so I'm gonna pause it for a second here okay guys I'm back here in the restroom and pretty much it's gonna be I'm gonna test the mask so here we are I'm gonna test the mask out so I don't have to calm the camera because that's not gonna look nice but I'm gonna fix the camera we'll give you guys a good view so I have on myself the Everything I need to survive so when there's a biohazard chemical attack when there's rain or something or fog Then it should probably protect, protect you but Here we are we're gonna test it on so we're gonna test for breeze because this stuff sprays like if it was a spray spray But it's still and then we're gonna use axe Because I know it's body spray is probably the best thing so Spray up and you can get the thing so here we go. We're going to test this out. I'm going to put the whole uniform set on. Now the one thing I'm concerned is I should have done the video was button up the fully the uh, jacket on to make it fully tight so my sleeves are like really my whole arm are begging for air even though it's the exact opposite. So you probably should do this if you're hydrated. So if you drink a lot of water and everything your body might process easy with getting oxygen so you can hold more breath in when I've heard it, but anyways, I'm going to start this up. Okay, guys, we have a photo. Yeah, we have a photo. We're going to get started, so... And I'm not even going to pressurize, but... We're going to get started. So we'll have a difficult thing to put this thing on, so far. Okay guys, the gas mask is on, so we're going to test the gas mask, and then we're going to test it on this first one off, and then we're going to start. Okay. Not for yet. I can't smell anything. <coughs> uh, 
uh, nothing much, but it's not so much the gasket filter I'm worried about, it's the uh, inside of the whole body that's feel like this is all working, but I'm pretty sure that Okay. I'll give it about one more minute so we can see what the results are and I will tell you everything in the next room. That does about a bit. So, I'm going to spray a little bit more. This should be my fault. Okay, so I can see a little wet this in my sleeve, but. Nothing. Yeah, Alright, guys. I'm gonna pause it here. Okay, guys. I'm gonna take everything off. Alright, guys. Oh, I can smell it. I can smell it. Oh, my God. So, the gas mask works. It's probably NBC proof. If I would, I can't tell if M TF1 or NBC filters. If they are, then let me know in the comment below. But. What people told me is that they're not NBC approved. I can tell my gas mask is fully soaking wet. I can't feel because my hands. I can feel coldness, but I can't feel wet. So now here is going to be the test part. We're going to take everything off, and then I'm going to show you how, what how, what if my body inside can smell. So I'm not wearing. I'm underneath all of this. I'm wearing a simple sweatshirt. So the sweatshirt should absorb a lot of that stuff. So I can tell. So I'm going to. Pause it here. Okay, guys, so I have everything off. Nope, that's just smell of clean t shirt, and I don't smell of the breeze. I know my. Hand smell like really something funky, like it's, it has a, it has that some of that scent on. But again, my hands are sweaty too, so that's another thing that's a problem. I'm gonna take this off and then I'm gonna take this off. So I'm gonna show you guys. So maybe it, the whole thing is probably NPC approved. <sighs> nope, my hands smell like powder, so I am getting a little suspicious smell that maybe this arm. Oh, okay. Note to self, it is protective, but the hand over here is these two wrists are not protected, so I can smell the Febreze and Axe and everything. So the question being said is that is the is everything I'm wearing is NBC approved? And the answer is yes, because I can't get any of that scent smell. Um, for the point saying is there is different types of nuclear out there and it are probably a lot worse. The, the main nuclear thing that we're kind of afraid of is the one stuff that it only gets in our skin and it melts. That's the only thing we're afraid of. But there's alpha radiation that's very, very, very the worst. That's like the top worst radiation to get in life because then that can go through like a ghost and then you start to melt and cough and everything. You die instantly. Not instantly, but slowly die. So, so this video is going to be. Mainly about the GP5, is it really NBC approved? So if you have an NBC filter, is it really a NBC? Surprisingly, I don't smell for breeze in here. Only here. Yeah. 
I can smell it from here, but to here I can't smell it. So it is NPC approved. So there you guys have it. The uh, GP5 gas mask is NPC approved. So basically you can have all the gear I'm wearing and be protective easily. So my next gas mask video series, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but sometimes I'm not upgrading myself with a different jacket wear. But in my opinion, this is probably the best uh, military jacket I've worn. It has an MP, but in spilled backwards is PM, but it, it looks like a backwards Q. But if I had the camera really horizontally corrected, I would you could read that. Uh, this is what I bought from the surplus, so this is what they put it on this thing. So I don't know. So this is probably what a classic retro, probably 1980s, or they probably use it today. I don't know how Air Force use it, but. This is probably 1980s because I had seen the new Air Force camouflage and pretty much, yeah, it's a good type of source of gas. It's a gas mask with this. Now this, I can smell the Febreze from the, when this jacket. So you know the rules are for a nuclear attack. Once your body, is, once your clothing is fully exposed to nuclear radiation, the point is to get out of it real fast until you're no longer at the ticking ground zero or. Some people can survive ground zero, but I wouldn't recommend. So smash that like and put a subscribe on my channel and catch you guys later. And be up more with the new 